All right, well, I am extremely happy to be here with one of my music idols, Dave Wakeling from the English Beat. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much, Dave, for letting us into your uh, abode here. Uh, Lovely. <laughs> Charming downtown Los Angeles. It, it's a beautiful day. Sunny. Yeah, it is, it is. And Dave, I had the pleasure, last time we met uh, that we did an interview was almost five years ago, uh, June of 2012. And um, a lot of things have happened uh, in your career. You've been a busy man over the last half decade. Last time we mm -hmm. talked, uh, the English Beat uh, box set had just come out. That mm -hmm. was really exciting news. But since that time, you've been involved in a lot of things, a lot of touring. And I uh, wanted to check in with you uh, for our five-year um, sort of checkup. Five-year checkup. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Got my gloves. Um, <laughs> We've been touring a lot, at about yeah. 140, 150 shows a year, wow. uh, and practicing new songs, and then recorded the new songs. So there's an album nearly finished now, uh, be finished within the next few weeks, coming out spring-ish, wow. Wow. as soon as the record company can get it out. And, uh, and we've managed to go back enough time so as to develop really excited, enthusiastic, more or less sold out venues across the country now. Definitely. Uh, you know, like a lot of groups, it was the both coasts, wasn't it, to start yeah. with. Mm -hmm. And and it was like that when we tried to come back, but yeah. now we've gone to St. Louis and Kansas City enough times to wow. prove our point. And okay. So we can fill houses sometimes two in a row and wow. sell it out in advance. So wow. it seems to have reached a nice critical mass just as the records uh, Coming out, yeah, and uh, and there are, I think some great plans for um, for touring this summer Very that, cool. uh, that could just link it all together, you know. Definitely. Be better. Well, Dave, a, a lot of exciting things, definitely, and and I've seen your roster of tours on Songkick, where it's English Beat. You're one of the my favorite bands, and so I always see like oh, English yes. Beat's touring, and I'm just amazed at how many shows you do. I mean, you mm. guys are are so uh, vibrant and so energized. And I want to talk about the new album, of course, uh, entitled Here We Go Love. Here We Go Love. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you, the way you say it is so much more elegant. <laughs> here We Go Love. And mine's like, here we go love. That's not Well, really there's all sorts it. of different things it could mean. So there's yeah. lots of different, different ways you could say it. Yeah, yeah I want yeah. it a little bit of ambiguity. Yeah, definitely. Well, I was very, very blessed and lucky to have had the pleasure of hearing a couple uh, raw, or what sounded like very almost finished cuts. Um, very close to now, Very yeah. close, uh, off the album. And um, one was called If Killing Works, It Would Have Worked By Now, question mark. Yeah. That's one of them. And then the other track that was really cool is um, How Can You Stand There? Kind yeah. of a, a very anthemic uh, call to action, either dancing or maybe more political. And um, mm -hmm. those tracks really embody what I view as sort of the, the essence of great English beat um, music and lyricism, more particularly your lyricism, in that there's, there's sort of a political um, call to action. You know, we're not going to take it anymore. But there's also, it's not so pessimistic that you just become nihilistic and give up. There's an optimism, mm -hmm. there's a hope. And um, you used the word um, uh, hangry, I think, earlier. <laughs> half <laughs> angry. Half, yeah. Half, you half, half angry. I don't know, I just came up with it. It's half great. angry. It's like, That's well, going to be think, the name of the next album. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think it, what it is, is uh, the situation in the world can be rotten. Yeah. Uh, you might not even like things people are doing. Mm -hmm. even doing as if they were representing you whilst they're doing it. Yeah. Uh, but if you adopt their way of expressing it, you get as bad as them. Mm -hmm. We learned this about Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Uh, if you complain and rant too much against something, you get more like it, the thing mm -hmm. you're ranting against, and it gets in the way of your life. So yeah. just as we did with Margaret Thatcher, we thought it might be the end of the world soon. It was that looking that catastrophic. So you politely put your point and have a dance just in case it's your last chance yeah. to dance. Yeah. Uh, it's not going to affect the joy of life. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, before, the, before we went on air, uh, yeah, I sort of jokingly, one of my questions was going to be asking you, uh, here we are in 2017 and a lot of things are going on in the world and, and whether you guys plan on ever playing a song <coughs> titled uh, Stand Down Donald. And you said, well, first he'd have to stand up, actually. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's early days, and uh, yeah. I do give every president a chance. Yeah. I liked Obama, yeah. so I gave him more of a chance. Yeah. I'll on for a bit longer there, but I gave, I even gave George Bush a chance. Yeah. And he, he didn't seem that good at the time, did he? But uh, he let him get up on his water skis first. Yeah. Uh, the first week, uh, okay. me giving him a chance is at least about as long as my arm of 
yeah. things where he said the exact opposite of what actually yeah. is truth. Yeah. Uh, so that's not a great start. Yeah. And I do worry about totalitarianism because it's a slide. Yeah. And it's a slide that might include all of Europe. Yeah. Uh, it may be that it's already well past the point of discussion and all sides might be gearing up for a world war because it's the only way anybody can think of making any money. Because yeah. the systems are broke, aren't yeah. they? They don't work. And so yeah. it may be the stimulus might have to be another world war, in their opinion. Looks yeah. like it, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, there, there's a, some more an song anthems there, I, sadly. But we may not be around to, like you said, it may be our last dance if we... Uh, but what was your opinion, being from Birmingham, England, of course, what was your, what's your opinion on the whole Brexit situation, the kind of isolationism uh, in Europe, the potential trends there? Working class people have been deserted by their politicians in yeah. England and in America. Yeah. Uh, their representatives became part of the political elite and just deserted them. And uh, I'm an environmentalist. Mm -hmm. I work for Greenpeace. I like the idea of renewable energy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I did a solar-powered album in the 90s called Alternative NRG to, to try and promote that sort I, of I, thing. That's a great. At the same time, it's not fair to just chuck loads of industrial workers or miners out of jobs and don't give them nothing else to do. Mm. It's not fair. Mm -hmm. um, so those sorts of things matter. You have to look after people as well. Yeah. People are part of the environment too. Yeah. And, uh, and that's where they messed up really, I think. So yeah. Yeah. But the same in the main part in England. Uh, I don't know whether it's the politicians' fault though. I think they've run out of system. Mm. I think the system's broke. Yeah. There's a wheel off the tracks, really, yeah. um, and it seems that the only way to stimulate growth is to create conflict and war. Being the, the drama of war, yeah. I did wonder about it, because if you're going to bring manufacturing jobs back to the Rust Belt, well, it's not going to be cars, because we've got enough of them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what else could you make? Maybe robots, but then they'll automate the jobs, and then, ironically, we'll all be out of work, or, or right? what about tanks? Oh, tanks, okay. Oh, missiles? Well, yeah. they could make those, couldn't they? Yeah. That, that's where they made them last time, didn't that, they? That is true. That Wasn't is it true. the Rust Belt that won World War Two, really, in some respects? Are they I guess manufacturing so. I guess so. enormity? Could, yeah. You could just make that many more tanks than anybody else yeah. that you could keep up. It's true. But as you said, as it, speaking about the sort of long-term sustainability of these systems, you know, there's short-term things that boost the economy, but then we sort of have to look at the bigger picture about the earth. And, and, uh, and I've always respected, I remember your, your, your advocacy work that you've done through the years, and you've always been such a, um, I think, a great uh, sort of representative of, of mindfulness about the environment and about um, sustainability. So uh, that's But you've got to be pragmatic. Yeah. And I, even when I worked at Greenpeace, yeah. we had some, some moments where, you know, purism and pragmatism would clash. Gotcha. We, we got to make a solar-powered album, created a, a big like a semi-trailer yeah. yeah. with solar panels and batteries, and we took it all around the country and recorded bands like U2. I remember and, R.E.M., you know, Beastie Boys, yeah. I had that record. It was oh, great. Did you? Yeah, yeah. And, it was great, apart from we had to get it from A to B, yeah. you know. And uh, at the time, the natural gas was trying to push its way mm -hmm. in, and Greenpeace's stance was, well, it's just another fossil fuel, really. Yeah. They're just trying another way to keep the game yeah. away from renewables. Yeah, yeah. Which is true, yeah. but it was also true that it was a lot less dirty than diesel. Mm -hmm. So I had the offer from the gas people, how about we give you a truck no. and all the liquid gas you need okay. so you can take your thing all the way across America and record all these concerts wow. and have the Greenpeace sticker on one door and ours on the other. And when I took it to Greenpeace they were like, no, <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> and I understood yeah. it was purism. So instead... Pra pragmatism versus idealism. Instead, yeah. I spent about 40 grand on like filthy diesel trucks okay. to go around America, oh, wow. record the album and yeah. before the bands got there they were like, get that! That's hilarious. Huh? Don't come back what's to the gun. What's that smell? What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that's what truck ran on at the time. But the yeah, you had to do what you had to do for the greater good, and that was definitely fit into that. Yeah. It would have been, but you know, I wasn't allowed to. So we we just used a diesel truck, and we spent the money instead of the gas. And I understood because people would say, "Oh, Greenpeace is yeah. using fossil fuels." Yeah. But it was so. It's a shame. Uh, in most of the political uh, debates. 
the people who voted for Trump and the people who supported Bernie Sanders have got way more in common than their differences. Although it looks as though they're, you know, polar ends. It's yeah. not a straight line, it's a circle. Yeah. Just like the Tea Party and the 90, 99%. The, their list yeah. of complaints, almost identical. What they think needs doing, almost identical. Just a difference of where does the funding come from. Yeah, there's sort of a populism there, whether mm -hmm. on different sides of the spectrum. Yeah. But yeah. And, that, and that had it in Brexit too. Yeah. There's also a very sophisticated part of Brexit that lots of people knew they were actually voting against their own self-interest, mm. but they were voting more against the interests of the people who were ruling them. Yeah. So they didn't mind cutting their own nose off, so long as it spited the ruler's face yeah. as well. Yeah. And there was this notion that they wanted to be told what to do by heartless people in their own language, not in Belgian or French yeah. anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. The other people. They want to be bullied by their own. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you know. Don't we all really, right? Um, you know, we recently had the pleasure of interviewing Pauline Black from The Selector, mm -hmm. and um, your name came up in that conversation very positively, of course. Um, but you've, I'm just, when I look at your sort of discography and all of the projects you've been involved in, the collaborations that you've done through the years, so amazing, so extensive, going way back to the two-tone days mm -hmm. to now. And looking back on sort of the history of, of other artists that you've had the pleasure of taking the stage with, um, are there any that really stand out? I mean. Uh, it, sort of like the highlights of, of, of some of those memories, people that you've performed with? Yes, The Clash, oh, yeah. Bowie, and The Talking Heads Remain in Light, expanded mm. Talking Heads, the two-tone Talking Heads, we call them. Yeah. And uh, th those would be the highlights, I think. Uh, but th there was many others as well, but The Pretenders was great. There's been lots, right. of, lots of people, and even people that you haven't toured with, but you get a chance to sit and have a conversation or two yeah. with like Morrissey or somebody oh, like that, okay. um, the boy George. Yeah. And you, you have interesting insights uh, from people who see the world from a similar part of the fishbowl. Yeah, yeah, that's very <laughs> interesting. So I like that part of it a great deal as well. Yeah, very we, cool. We, we can gently share our madness. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of Morrissey, yeah, we, we ended up interviewing the Damned at the Roxy, and he was there in the audience. Was kind it? Of, I'm a huge fan, so I was yes. kind of freaking out. Yeah. And um, it was the day, um, kind, of ra kind of connecting to something we said earlier, it was a, the day Prince died. And so The Damned played, I think, Manic Monday in mm -hmm. honor. He r originally wrote that for the Bengals. And um, you mentioned Bowie earlier, and I kind of wanted to, you know, 2016 was kind of a rough year for a lot of us as music fans in terms of some of the, the people that had, that had mm -hmm. passed. And um, not, to, not to bring the vibe down too mm -hmm. much here and become too uh, morose or, or uh, reflective or whatever, but um, in terms of the different artists that passed away, I'd imagine Bowie maybe was one that was really kind of hit, hit you the hardest, or am no, I no, wrong no, about that? Uh, that's the one that I'd, I had was sort of started crying before I realised I had, as I was finding out. Yeah. So that was the, that was the most visceral. Yeah. Um, been a fan since the first record and followed him, been to every concert, then and got to with. being his opening band, yeah. and got to talk to him and everything. Wow. You know? wow. So all that, that that meant a lot. But I mean, it's uh, there is a saying that uh, you wear on your face in your 60s what you did in your 30s. Mm. That's if you're lucky enough to still have a face. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, and I think that's particularly true in the pop game, uh -huh, where uh -huh. young people can get a bit overexcited, can't they? Maybe have that half a glass of sherry more than they expected, yeah. um, <coughs> or intended. And so there's a bit of that. Uh, I was probably most surprised by Prince, because mm. he seemed on the outside to be this yeah. bundle of health and energy. I yeah. didn't know about any of the other issues. Yeah. But also, always ahead of his time, wasn't he? He was you a know, visionary. Yeah. Always ahead of his time. I wanted yeah. to like, whoa, 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 wait, wait. We're not doing the 50s yet. No. Mm. We're doing the early 70s into the late 60s, right? Mm. Then we'll do my set. Then we'll do you, Prince. Wait your turn. <laughs> I don't want that many people younger than me dying. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. You can just hang on. Yeah. Hang yeah. on. If you're feeling bad, give me a shout. We'll <laughs> see if we can keep you going. Yeah. Hmm. One question that I ask certain artists um, that I, I love asking, because I think it says a lot about them and their musical history. Last time we did an interview, we talked about your influences, the Birmingham scene, things like that. But I didn't ask, get a chance to ask you what the very, very first album 
or record uh, was that you purchased when you were a kid and uh, whether that was something that uh, was influential for you or um, can you recall like the first, and maybe it's the first couple albums that you bought when you were really young. I was a singles man myself so yeah. I bought a heck of a lot of singles yeah. um, as a teenager in my early teens in the 60s and then albums I think it was at a time when um, some bands refused to do singles. Mm. Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So yeah. Led Zeppelin One would probably be one of the first albums I bought. Okay. Maybe also a Jethro Tull record. Okay. But uh, ten years after record. Okay. Maybe. Kind of progish stuff a little bit. And then some uh, when they came out, uh, Trojan, yeah, the Trojan. reggae tighten up. Records, yeah. which were the songs that we'd listen to on the football terraces in mm. our early teens, and yeah. now they were available as compilation albums. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, what, were, what about those singles? Those first singles? Uh, any, any of the Cream, okay. Jimi Hendrix, oh, nice. um, um, Manfred Mann, okay, Tuna okay. Clark. And, um, and I had a smashing collection, but my dad threw them on the fire. He was always um, terribly worried about, like, keep your bloody records tidy. Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, one day he just came in from work, and I got my record player and the singles on the... Yeah, it's kind of like in those those pictures where the, the person's on the floor with their headphones and they've one got the records on. One of those, that sort of relaxing moment. Yeah. And he just, without actually stopping on his way into the kitchen, he just scooped up the records, threw them on top of the coal fire in the oh, grate oh. and walked into the kitchen. I told you about them bloody records. Oh. And I looked as they started to like melt and burst into oh. flame. It was too late. There was one on the Vertigo label, I remember, black and white. And that was the last thing I saw. And despite that early trauma, you still went on to become a musician. Probably, that could have been a... Probably because of it. Oh, because probably of that. because of it. That's why I brought it up. What, yeah. what caused it, Dave? What started it, mate? You know, yeah, that's yeah. probably what it was. That, I mean, records. That, you, had, you bringing up... Records. Yeah. Okay. Why did, did they tell you? I I, I, I heard some information mm -hmm. off the okay. right. Yeah. Uh, you, that sounds like something you're on the therapist's couch, you know, and kind of talking about the. Right I think thing. about it whenever I make one of those uh, plant pots. You ever done that with an album? Yeah. Where you put it over the pot and just put boiling water uh -huh. over the top. Uh -huh. I like doing that. But it also does bring back that awful moment. Yeah. <laughs> any ruined record? We won't ruin any records in front of Dave. Uh, we know that it's like his Stat uh, fingernails on the pictures of matchstick men. Yeah. I keep hearing that because uh, uh, he he, he passed uh, the lead singer passed away pretty recently. I keep hearing that song. There in the you bars. go again. What are you? I know. I, Angel of Death. Boo. Well, on a more positive note, um, <laughs> um, Dave, if you were if you were stuck on a desert island, uh, what are some of your Desert Island albums. If you could choose like three or five records, I know this is a really hard question, but yeah. and you can't choose English Beat or your own work. Um, because on a desert island, the last thing I want some bloody record players. <laughs> <to> waste <laughs> that. Give me some like seeds for various varieties of avocados, that's and true. plantain, true. mango, that sort of thing. I don't want bloody records. Okay, okay. Why would you want a desert? Last okay. thing you'd want on a desert island. All right. Uh, I always wondered about they used to do that in the sixties, Desert Island discs. Yeah, like, and then the label Desert. Yeah, you just but... imagine like getting washed up. It's like oh, oh, <laughs> I'm oh at least I got my records. <laughs> it's like, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't need your records. You got the songs in your head. Don't you? I can sing my favorite songs. I don't need to carry them in my backpack. That is That's true. That's my party survival kit. Is it that something is to make fire with? Ah. That would be much more useful. Did you know the Vikings did it? I was just reading about it this morning, it's bizarre, huh. but they got this sort of uh, bark and fungus from just under the bark of certain trees, mm -hmm. soaked it in urine, I don't know, human or animal, for a few weeks, uh -huh. and then pushed it into this sort of felt matting, huh. and the urine did some of this fungus so that it was volatile and you had to do very little to it to make it start to smolder, oh, wow. so you didn't have to make a spark, oh, really? so they took it in the boats, and you could always start a fire with it. Wow. Quite miraculous, really. That's a great little desert island tip. So I'd want like, some of that. Yes. Give me some of that. Yes. Viking piss, and, uh, Viking piss soap <laughs> fungus, please. <laughs> All right. That was a good album. I like that That's going to be the next uh, English Beat album coming out. All right. Well, Dave, thanks again for your time. And uh, again, want to remind fans out there to check out EnglishBeat.net for all the latest tour and uh, project information. And of course, very, very soon, 
Here we go, love. Is, Here we go, love. He says it so so better than I do. But check out the album. I'm really excited. I've heard a couple tracks. They're excellent. And I'm sure all of the fans out there are going to love it, too. Thanks again, Dave, for your time. Mon Thank plaisir. You.